We are live. Good morning. I said good morning. Hey, I'm used to that. It's a little Alright. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh yeah? That's cool. Yeah, and we have 25 more on the way. <laughs> Don't sound so excited. Well, she is. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see you, Miss Alice. It's, what, two years or something? It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. COVID. Yeah. Wonderful stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Although I saw in the news this morning, at least one third of the country is fully vaccinated, and almost half is, has at least one shot. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, some announcements for today. Don's funeral is this afternoon. Okay, what I got was visitation was from 3 to 4, and then the funeral was at 4, but the obituary was a little different. It was flipped, yeah. and it seems weird. It seemed weird. I think that may be a typo. I'm thinking it was, too. I don't know when you were planning on meeting. I have a PPR meeting over there at the church, so I won't be here. We'll probably go down sooner, but so. I do need the address again. Okay. Is it on there? It's on there. It's on. Well, it's on or there. It's, I found it. She okay. found it. <coughs> okay. Oh, she's got it. She's got it? Okay. She's got it. We're good. <laughs> she got it? Yeah. We were good. Does she uh -huh. needs to know where she's going. There you go. I'll also need to know so I can navigate for her from time to time. <laughs> the GPS while the other no, person is driving. And it doesn't always take you the best route. That's what upsets me. <laughs> sometimes it looks like the turn should be sooner. Sometimes you're following this and you missed your turn. Yeah. But it's like, okay, it's, wait a minute. Yeah, so. All right. Wednesday night, Bible study. We're doing the last. The last the, uh, prayer. Prayer. Of the coloring. Praying while coloring mandalas. Mandalas. Every time you say that, I think it's Nelson Mandela. <laughs> we, we wanted information about the mandalas, so I asked Siri, and she put in, she, she told us about Nelson. Nelson. <laughs> yeah, it's just this. And then next week, we won't. We're going to be starting the women of the Bible in the New Testament, but not next week, because next week is our night at Hamlet. Okay. The food panel, so. Hey, good transition, then. Yeah. Great transition. Well, we kind of need to know where we left off, Debbie. Which is where, because I couldn't find it. It's in the book. Yeah. Okay. She needs help. Okay. I wasn't going there, but hey. You know. Uh, next Sunday is the first Sunday of May. It's communion. We're almost halfway done with this year already. Hopefully by the time we get to next year. Yeah, COVID. hopefully we can forget about the last year or so. Um, the 
copies of the page yet for everybody to go through. Um, but it's not until September, October. Well, I better plan on doing it now if I want to be ready. By well, then. I think that's why they are sending these books out because so Because I now. keep forgetting. Yeah. I'm not fast enough at looking to tell you, but I will get copies of Can the book. Can I see it? You're good. Uh, no, I'm not good at anything. <sighs> Any birthdays, anniversaries, anything coming up anybody knows? Where are we at? You don't know Keith, he's uh, Cindy's grandson. Cindy's grandson, Keaton. Huh? You're, well, you're not on my list. Well, then she needs to be put we on the list. We need to put you on that list. Tuesday? All right, so 27. Let's tell one. You don't even know what month it is? This is the beginning of baseball month. You should know that. We've been doing good. We have been doing good. A lot better than the last five years. September 11th, as long as we're in the West Region, which is the sale. Yeah. Uh, St. James. St. James? Yep, September they're usually, 11th. They're usually the ones that do it. Okay. We're going to sing Happy Birthday to Helen. Yay! <laughs> Happy Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Helen. Happy birthday to you. And many more. One, two, three, forward. Yeah. Teresa? Samantha? Mm -hmm. Lucas's first T ball game is at 8 o'clock Saturday morning. Next. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah, that's what I said. Well, since I get up at 4 30 in the morning, that's not fun anymore. See? I, I actually got to see my grandson play soccer last, cool. yesterday morning. Cool. For the first time. Cindy's already seen him. It is so much fun watching them play. He, he looks pretty silly. He was on the ground a lot, <laughs> and it wasn't because people were tripping him. <laughs> Only twice did people trip him. He landed on the ground about 15 times. I got to get on my main CD Yay. yesterday. Yay. We both did really good. 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 That's great. Are we going to start Chubby School back That's something that we'll have to talk about. Cindy, Cindy's at a slumber party. She spent the night somewhere. And she didn't get to bed at eight thirty. She was still awake at ten. Oh, oh she's gonna be cranky. Maybe when she gets home, now, or when I get home. She wasn't home when I left, and she said they might do some stuff this morning. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Let's uh go to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> Holy God, open our eyes that we may see what good needs to be done. Open our imagination that we may figure out what good we can do. And Lord, open our hearts to your empowering love that we may have the courage to act when we see the good that needs to be done. Through your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Let's sing our praise song. He lives. Let's stand if you want. I serve the breeze and sing. I can see it.
came in. Now, now you can sit down. Except for Lois, she has to sit Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse 14. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Amen. Amen. Now, now they can sit. Clinton. Hard time at school? Oh, <laughs> Worse than you think. Worse than you think. Yeah. Somebody I don't I don't care to hear their names. Okay. Do you love them? Not the ones that give you a hard time. Do you think you should love them? It's hard though, isn't it? And we'll give you a hard time. You know what Jesus said about it? What? Jesus, he was having this big sermon on, and it's called the Sermon of the Mount. Yes. Jesus said, even though the king back. But he's, well, maybe not in those words because we don't know exactly what he said. But he said this, love your enemies. It's really hard though, isn't it? Uh, basically, basically in Batman, Lego Batman, they, they just hated each other. Uh, Batman. But why, why should you love your enemies? Because there's still a bit of a debate from the Very good, Quentin. They are still God's children, aren't they? Even if they're bad. And that's right. They may be getting it from other people and just passing it on, right? 
So, what would happen if you love them? They might open up to you and they might change their ways. And that's what Jesus hopes for everybody. That we love everybody, even those who are bad to us. Because then if you can that's right. Everybody Jesus, do you know? Don't know, do you? But it's not easy, is it? You have to kind of work at it, don't you? Just have to remember, you know, when somebody's being mean to you, just remember what Jesus said. Love your enemies. Don't fight back, which is kind of hard because you want to fight back, don't you? Just be, yeah. just be nice to them. And hopefully, they will see your example and they will want to follow your example. They'll figure out that being mean and being a bully and all that takes a lot more energy than it does to be nice. Yeah. It's like the old saying, to be sad and to frown takes more muscles than to smile. Okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it's easy to love those who love us. And Lord, we need help to love those who give us a hard time, who are rude to us, and, and who bully us. And, Lord, we just need your help to remember that they are your children, just like we are. And we just need your help to push us in the right direction. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right. You need to wake up. All right. While they're getting a treat, Quentin ran off. That's amazing. Let's turn to him number 348. Oh, he's back. This call. <laughs>
to doing what is good in order to provide the urgent needs and not live unproductive lives. Amen. From the heart. Easter. The world is waking up again. Its winter sleep is done. The leaves shake out their pale green folds and brighten in the sun. A crocus pushes through the earth and stretches from its deep. This springtime day explore each lovely thing. The footsie wheels pop up to us and the butterflies take me. At Easter, all the world is fresh, and the missile days are thawed. Each living thing is born again, and all the dreams are new. Thanks, Pam. Anybody else have anything they want to share this morning? No? All right. All right. Three simple rules. We started with rule one from John Wesley last week, do no harm. And like I said, that's probably the toughest one. Today we're going to talk about a little bit about rule two, do good. A little, little tough in its own right, isn't it? Now, and there you go. The festival of sharing. I got you can in all you can to all the people you can as long as you ever can. Yeah. That is I'm attributed. Tired. I'm, ti I'm tired of saying it. But tired. that is attributed to John Wesley. Although they can't actually find anything where he actually said this in this particular order or in this particular way, but a lot of the things he said come together in this saying. But even though we didn't say it, is there anything wrong with it? Really, there isn't anything wrong with this saying, whether he said it or not. Because, I mean, we really should do all the we, good we can, by all the means we can, in all the ways we can, in all the places, at all the times, to all the people, and as long as we can. I mean, we should do that every day anyway, shouldn't we? Our reading, our gospel reading today comes from Luke 6, Verse 35, and it's what I talked to the kids about this a little bit ago. It says, but love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be the children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. That last part of it's a little, a little odd. He's kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. It's because God is kind to everybody, isn't he? It doesn't sound hard that we are to good. Just go around doing good. Who's the... 
I don't know, one of the superheroes. It wasn't that his thing, just going around doing good things for people or something? The question is, do we go around and do good? We don't, it just kind of slips our mind a lot, doesn't it? Now that Old Testament reading from Psalms told us, point blank it says, turn from evil and do good. Now, last week we talked about the Ten Commandments and how we as humans, our nature tends to push us or turn us towards doing harm. Because a lot of times we think of just ourselves. Harm takes a lot of work. Well, trying to do good takes a lot of work too. Because sin and evil are in our bodies because of the fall by Adam and Eve. And Satan is doing everything he can to keep us from doing good. To have us sit back and not jump in when we see something, just to kind of, oh, somebody else will take care of that. You know, you have that mentality. Now, Reuben Job, who wrote the book, Three Simple Rules, on John Wesley's rule, <laughs> stated that doing good is seeing the need and taking action. It's being proactive. And most people are reactive in their lives. When something happens, they react. Looking to do good and being proactive. Now we've been given this wonderful gift. We're made in the image of God and we have this wonderful thing called free will. Free thinking. We can do pretty much what we want. We do have to pay for the consequences, but he gave us the ability to think for ourselves. So we can decide whether we want to help others or not. And sometimes it can be a little hard seeing the need in other people. Job says this, says, far too many times we have contributed to the competitive culture that encourages greed and selfishness and discourages compassion, sharing, fairness. Wesley was really good at this. He went around, not so much to the churches where the upper class, the well-to-do went, he went to where the poor were, to those people that couldn't make it to church or because the way they dressed or whatever, they weren't allowed in church. And he went and preached to them. He went to the factories. He went to the fields. He went to the poor parts of town to reach those people. And he did one thing we've talked about. He made it intentional to go and visit people. He made it his intention to go and visit people. He got to know them. He got to know the poor. He could all because of they weren't smart enough or they didn't have the skills enough. They were poor because of what the upper class was doing to them. It wasn't their doing, but it was what other people were doing. John Wesley sought to make the welfare of the poor the criteria of every aspect of his new Methodist movement. He built his churches. If you've ever seen any of pictures of John Wesley's churches, they are not ornate at all. They are very plain. They were built with the available funds. He did not want to owe anybody anything because the money came from the upper class and if you owed them they treated you like the poor. But his reason for doing this and for going this way had to do with his idea his understanding of it. And the Bible teaches us that God's grace is out there for everybody. It's not just a certain group of people that God loves and God gives His grace to. It's everybody. All we have to do is seek it and grab a hold of it. 
And because God gives His grace freely to everybody, we should freely do the same thing. We should do good to other people and help those. And he says salvation is really not a result of anything we do. It's the result of God's grace. So, you kind of think of it, well, if doing good doesn't do anything for me, then why should I do it? But, because of that salvation, because of that grace, we should want to do good so that we can go around and bring other people to that salvation and that grace. And he called that work works of mercy. Now these works of mercy included everything, he says, everything which we give or speak or do whereby our neighbor may be profited. Whereby another man may receive any advantage either in his body or especially in his soul. The feeding of the hungry, the clothing of the naked, the entertaining or assisting comfort of the afflicted and the instructing of the ignorant, reproving of the wicked, the exhorting and encouraging of the well-doer. And if there be any other work of mercy, it is equally included in this direction. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? What he was saying. Because that comes from Matthew 25, verses 35 and 36, where Jesus was telling of the separating of the sheep and the goats. And he says, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. And I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came and visited me. Jesus is telling those people, and he's telling us that when we see a need, we are to take care of it. That God either puts us in the path of somebody needing a need, or he puts that person in our path to give us the opportunity to do good. In this, Jesus was telling of the separating of the sheep who were the doers of good, and the goats who were the ones who just weren't seeing it and weren't doing it and weren't helping. As I said, it's our job to take care of this planet. It's our job to do good to the plants. And if you go to our New Testament reading in Titus, our people must learn to devote themselves to doing what is good in order to provide for urgent needs and not live unproductive lives. Devote ourselves to doing good. To provide those urgent needs. There are some people that don't have urgent needs. We should help them too. But when we see somebody who has an urgent need, a need now, we need to take care of it. Paul wrote this letter to Titus, to the church in Crete, to tell them that, you know, you guys aren't doing what you're supposed to be doing. That you're not doing your part for God's children. We need to make sure that we do our part. If we're waiting for dinner, like he said he would, and then the stranger shows up, and then the children show up, and, the mother, and we help them, we are doing good because that is God showing up in those people. In other words, do good all the time. At the time that James wrote his epistle was a time when widows and orphans were really treated horribly. Widows were women who had no family. They didn't have any children, and maybe their husband didn't have any family to help take care of them. And of course, you know, orphans had no parents. So they were really treated horribly. And he was telling everybody that pure religion is defined as caring for those in need. And those type of people had urgent needs. And to do that, we are avoiding the sins of the world. And what are the sins of the world? Selfishness, consumerism, 
Like I said earlier, me, me, me. We focus so much on ourselves that we don't see what's going on around us. Thinking of others. That's what Jesus taught us. That's what Jesus did. He was constantly thinking of others. He never thought about, okay, if I cure this guy, what's in it for me? Or if I help this person and raise him from the dead, what's in it for me? He never thought of himself. It was always, what can I do for other people? But what is one problem of going out of our way to do good for others? Fear. Do I want to step out of my comfort zone and help that person? Is somebody going to see me and, you know, say something about it? It's the same way when somebody offers to help and yeah. you're not comfortable with And you're not with comfortable helping. with taking the help. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's, it's that fear of, of something different happening because we get very comfortable with our, our regimen and our lives and how things are. Or we may have this fear of, there's really nothing I can do for that person, is there? So I'm not even going to try. The fear that they won't want you to help them will feel mm -hmm. Or that you'll make a mistake and do something that will complicate matters. Yeah, more. there's a fear that if you do help, you might do it wrong. And that could make things worse. It's a fine line. There's simply so much that we can do, though. Even if we don't have a particular expertise, we can always call somebody who has that expertise, can't we? Instead of just saying, oh, they'll take care of it, or the next person will, will come along and take care of it. And think about it. As I was telling the kids, if you're nice to those people who are rude to you, they may change. They may see that that's a better way to be. And everything gets better. We don't know their story. We don't know why. Right. You know, there's a whole thing about, you know, I can't change the world. But you can change the world for that one person. Mm -hmm. If we do good to one person, they will in turn, or hopefully will in turn, to do good with, with another person. You never know where the seeds you plant will grow. Right. So plant many. Jesus said, love your enemies. Do good to them without expecting anything in return. A lot of times we do things because of what it may give us. I told the kids, it's easy to love your friends. It's easy to love everybody sitting here. It's easy. But go out into the world and love those people who are mean, who are rude. Put in the work to love your enemies. Because it comes down to my, my most people, a lot of people's favorite Bible verse, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. It wasn't because they loved him, because at least half of them hate him. But he loved the world so much that he sent his son. Not to die for this group of people, just the people doing good. But he died for everybody. Friend or enemy. So love to all and help to those in need. That's doing good. Keeping our eyes open to what's going on around us. Giving a drink to somebody who's thirsty or giving food to somebody who's hungry. Clothing the naked. Giving time to those in need. We, we Take every minute of the day and, and have it planned out. And then something happens and it's like, okay, that's, I, I don't know. And that's another place where that fear comes in. But we need to take that time. If nothing else, to let them know we're doing something for them. We love them. We'll make that phone call. We'll, we'll do what we can for them. Do all the good you can by all the means you can. In all the ways you can in all the places you can, at all the times you can. John Wesley Marion
God of love, through the ages you've empowered your people to do good. In a world which overwhelms us with opportunities to good, show us how we can make that difference. Show us those who are in need. Remind us that it's not about me, but it's about you. And it's about love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's turn to hymn number 454. Open my eyes that I may see. Yesterday, um, she was still not feeling well, 
She's on several medications, has been told to isolate because they're thinking she's got some type of a flu virus, a stomach virus that would be contagious, but they really don't know. And they're worried about her getting pneumonia. Mm -hmm. um, so she is supposed to stay away from everybody and, and rest. She um, is supposed to contact the doctor if she is not better um, on Monday and then they'll get her in and, and do some additional testing. But she is definitely somebody we need to keep in prayer, along with Cindy yeah. and with that whole family, because the stress has got to be tremendous. Mm -hmm. As of last night, she wasn't keeping anything down. Yeah, I know. Nothing. She said she could even like seven up. She take it in. She was trying to do saltines. So it, we definitely need to keep her in prayer. Don's family today. Don's family today. <coughs> Safe travels for all the people going to from all the places. Yeah, because I don't know where. I know it's down where he was originally, but we don't know where all families uh, migrated to over years. Yeah, ago. well, other than his kids, it is. They're still kind of in the area between here and there, but it's others I don't know. About an hour and 45 minutes to get there. Okay. Let's uh, bow our heads for some silence. Gracious and loving Father, I want to thank you for this wonderful little church. Though we're low, not many in numbers, our heart is big and we do love all. And Lord, I just pray that we can continue to show that love to everyone that we come in contact with. And I want to thank you for allowing to travel for some people who haven't been able to like Alan. for many people it's not been weeks or months it's been years since they've, since they've actually got to see people face to face their family and friends from around and Lord we just Pray that things continue to get better and people continue to do what is needed so that we can start a new normal similar to what we had before this terrible pandemic. And Father, we pray for Matthew as he continues to figure things out. Lord, we're so grateful that he wants to keep in contact and we hope and pray that he continues to keep in contact with his family and we hope his medications and we pray for your guidance that he seeks you and he listens to you and he can go and be with us, his family. Lord, we pray for our brother Don and his family. We know that he is up there with you and we are joyous that he is no longer in pain and he is with 
his wife, and those who went on before him. But Lord, we ask for your comfort for us here, for his family and friends, all who know him. Comfort us. Remind us that it is okay that he is with you. Lord, we pray for Will as they results of the CAT scan are pending. But we're thankful that the wound is healing and we just pray that this cancer is, even though cancer is serious, that this is not very serious and it can be easily treated. Lord, we pray for Ruth and Alice's brother that they understand what the chest pains were, find out what they were so they can come up with that treatment, guide those doctors' hands to the right diagnosis and the right treatment. And Lord, we have a heavy heart for our church family here with Linda and Cindy and Tad. And Lord, we pray for your healing on Linda and your continued healing for Cindy and your comfort for Tad and Pat and Mike and the whole family. that the healing can start with Linda and continue with Cindy and that Tad gets comforted while he's trying to handle all these other things. Father, we lift up all these people we've mentioned. We lift up all the people that are still in our hearts, all those that are still in our minds. We give them to you. Those who we have concerns about, we lift up for your healing, comforting touch. And those joys, we thank you for, for giving us those joys. And Lord, we pray all these things along with the prayer that your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, let's stand in our spot. Join our hearts together as one. As we turn to the joy of Jesus that he gives us. And I hope we can use that joy to show others.